So what would you say then, Tom, to someone that asked that question, how do I get started? What would your first kind of, let's just say they've literally not got any presence online, yeah. obviously got the knowledge, they've got some knowledge in terms of the you know coding knowledge. What would you do first three things to, to set them on the path to have that portfolio to become employable? Yeah, great question. So I think the first one is definitely just like get started with with a blog. Um, so literally set something up. Um, doesn't have to be a massive overhead, like I said, like a medium account or something like that. So like get that started first first thing. Second thing is probably find your niche after that. So of the available data out there that you can find or you know, or things like that, or obviously in the analysis space as well, it's um everyone can cover and analyze the Premier League. But you can you can watch the J League on YouTube matches like that. So like, what's your niche that you can find where there's access to the tools and resources, which then you can kind of make that your domain. Um, and then the third thing is probably like seek feedback. So in in the beginning, if you know if you don't have a lot of followers on Twitter or or LinkedIn or um, whatever kind of like media of choice you're on, you're probably not going to get a lot of feedback. Like I, I remember sitting there, I post like a piece on WordPress. And I'd sit there for like an hour afterwards, just press and refresh to see if the user <laughs> analytics would go up. Yeah. And at the peak, like, you know, your mindset changes. When you start with 10 people read your article, you're absolutely buzzing. And then after a few months, 100 people, like 10 won't associate you anymore. So then it's 100 people. Mm. What you really need in that first moment is like a small group of people you trust and you just want to get good feedback from them. So that can be friends. It can be family. Like I had, I had a group of my flatmates at the time that I'd send my articles to and just be like, I know you know nothing about football, but kind of what do you think about this? Am I explaining my ideas in the right kind of way? Is my writing solid? What do you think of my visuals? Like yeah. you don't need masses and masses of of people with feedback. You need one or two actually are going to give you that time of day, really. Um, and I I will I will kind of give a four point because I think it's important. Like when I started blogging and doing this stuff, I through kind of Twitter met a bunch of other analysts who were trying to break in at the same time, essentially. Never met any of them before. One was in Canada two were in london and i was in leeds at the time but we'd message every single day you know we were all kind of trying to start out yeah. and i think a lot of people will be in the same boat where if you're trying to start out there'll be like-minded mm. people also trying to do the same thing so like message them like say you know see you're trying to do similar things would be great to bounce ideas off each other and that is how you know you you kind of start communities and those relationships and bonds you build with people through that work um you know that can lead somewhere as well in the future through opportunities and things like that so i think that's a really important one as well yeah yeah definitely that like, i can resonate with that just from like a different perspective in terms of like for example when i've started doing this podcast i've done the same thing just speak to other podcasters and kind of you know you, you just learn things and obviously bounce ideas about so that's definitely yeah. a, a thing you, you mentioned uh, obviously find your niche uh, um, tom so because this is a question i do also get asked a lot in terms of like how soon sh should you niche down like when you started were you just you mentioned the mls was that yeah. your thing and did you yeah. that and deviate from that or because it can be a balance of how niche do you go and how soon do you go niche kind of thing? Yeah, of course. I think like the reason I chose MLS was because you could get public salary data. Mm. And I was really interested in like, you know, who were the players who were playing really well, but they were really, really um, undervalued. In it. Essentially, they were paid like a really low wage, but they're a really, really key player. Um, there was a midfielder, I can't remember his name now, I'm going to be kicking myself later, but um, it's a Canadian midfielder um, who was playing for... Uh, I can't remember who. So he was essentially like a bit of a six, bit of an eight. Um, yeah. He was on like a league minimum contract and he'd play every minute and he he would be like fantastic. And he'd be like, this guy should be earning like half a million a year, but he's getting paid like 100, 100 grand a year. And those ones I've really liked finding. Um, so I think to start with, it was like found just like kind of found the niche because I was interested. I think, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, I guess, like chicken, chicken and egg, but mm -hmm. I do think it's probably worth to start with. If you... I'm going to start out you need to be interested to write this stuff like when you're learning to code i found it's really hard to learn to code through using the examples they give you of like i don't know mortgage data sets things like that because i don't care mm. but if you find something you actually care about you're more willing to apply yourself and put the effort in so i think finding something early which differentiates you a little bit maybe from the market but also you know it's, you're going to get invested and really interested in that i think that's just a useful tool to keep learning and stick at it so i think as soon as you get bored You'll, you'll give up um yeah. so i think that's that's why it's important yeah yeah nice nice so 